The murder of Joanna Yates back in December 2010 drew massive media attention. It was her landlord, Christopher Jeffries, who then made front page news when he was arrested. When he was released on bail, the police did not make it clear publicly that he was no longer a suspect. Today, they have finally acknowledged the offence and discomfort caused to Mr Jeffries during that process. John Kay reports. Christopher Jeffries, described by police today as an entirely innocent man. But in 2010, the retired school teacher became a high profile murder suspect. Mr Jeffries was arrested when his tenant, Joanna Yates, was murdered in her Bristol flat. He remained a police suspect for more than two months, even after the actual murderer had been charged. Now, nearly three years later, the new Chief Constable of Avon and Somerset, Nick Gargan, has formally written to Mr Jeffries. The letter doesn't include the word apology, but it does acknowledge the hurt caused to Mr Jeffries during the process. Although it says his arrest was an integral step in the investigation, the Chief Constable admits the force should have considered making a public statement as soon as Christopher Jeffries was no longer a suspect. The Chief Constable says he is very sorry for the suffering caused to Mr Jeffries by the delay in doing so. A letter of exoneration like this from a Chief Constable to a former suspect is highly unusual. But Mr Gargan believes the case of Christopher Jeffries was exceptional given the intense media coverage of his arrest. He's been informed that the fingerprints, photos and DNA he gave to police while he was a suspect have now been destroyed. John Kay, BBC News, Bristol. And we can speak now to Christopher Jeffries, who joins us from Bristol. Mr Jeffries, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Uh, John mentioned in his report there the police say sorry for the suffering caused to you by their actions during the investigation, but there's been no formal apology. Should there have been one? Um, but, well, I think that the letter as it stands goes a very long way towards acknowledging everything which needed to be acknowledged. I mean, the letter really does three things. It, first of all, provides the kind of public exculpation which I received when the newspapers uh, that I sued had to go to the High Court to apologise. Um, it also um, acknowledges that the police could, um, as um, the previous Chief Constable admitted when he appeared before the Leveson inquiry, have done more at the time that I was eventually released from uh, police bail to indicate that I was no longer a suspect and was completely innocent. And the letter also goes on to acknowledge how extremely difficult a time it was uh, during um, not only the period when I was in custody, but the uh, subsequent nine weeks when I was still on police bail, as John Kay has uh, just mentioned. And I think it's worth saying uh, one other thing about that, um, because although the letter is um, directed to me, um, large number of family and friends um, suffered a considerable amount of media intrusion and distress as a result of all those events um, and I think they will also be extremely pleased um, that this letter has now been written. You had a torrid time, a very very uncomfortable time during that that period. Just how bad did it get for you and for your family and friends? Uh, well, as far as my family and friends uh, were concerned, obviously they were the subject of a great deal of media harassment, a great deal of uh, media intrusion. Um, and for too long the, the finger of suspicion um, was pointed at me. Um, and as far as I was concerned, well, I think probably the period of nine weeks during which I was um, still uh, on police bail and when I couldn't return to my flat, um, that was the most difficult uh, period that I've experienced. It's certainly not something I would like to have to relive. Mm. Has your life recovered now? Oh yes, um, although the um, last two and three quarter years have been very largely dominated by things that have arisen as a result of that arrest and appearing at the Leveson inquiry, yes, um, things are now very much uh, back to normal. Thank you. What lessons do you think should be learned from 
this particular case and what happened to you? Uh, well, I, uh, the chief constable has actually suggested that it might be quite interesting if at some point in the future I were to speak to um, his detectives um, because I think he feels that it would be quite interesting for them to hear from somebody on the other side of the, of the fence, as it were. Um, exactly the kind of experience uh, which they need to be aware of, um, the actions which they are um, initiating uh, result in. So is it a question for you then of, of the way the police and detectives dealt with you specifically in this case or do you think there is something procedural that should change so this doesn't happen to somebody else in the future? Uh, well, I think um, probably both. In my case, I think what happened was partly because the police were under such um, extreme media pressure themselves um, and they had to be seen to be acting. Um, it has been suggested, and I don't know whether there is any truth in this, that the length of time that I was kept on police bail um, was an attempt to suggest that perhaps there were some um, details which um, gave rise to reasonable suspicion that I was the murderer. Um, but um, I think it's extremely important that when investigations such as this are being conducted, um, the police do realise just how much distress can be caused, as happened in my case, to entirely innocent people. Christopher Jeffries, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Thank you.